Welcome back everyone to Willstopia and today we are at the top level of the temple complex to have a look at the new texture pack released by Mojang. This is the texture pack that Mojang is planning to become the official one though right now it's being released in order to get everybody's feedback on it so that we know what everyone likes, what everyone dislikes and all of that. Now one of the most important things I notice about this particular pack is that the glass is now very, very clear, quite transparent, and as a result I was seeing what was below it and the inconsistency of what I had below here looked really bad in this pack. So what I did is I replaced the center square with concrete and the above part with concrete powder and I think things look pretty nice now to represent the air aspect. Now concerning the concrete I got that idea from a little present sent by Matthew 982 who gave me a little present which included a components needed for a shulker box. So he gave me that all I needed in order to make a shulker box, I made the shulker box, he gave me a couple of diamonds with it. As well, we had the concrete that it was all wrapped in, and that gave me the idea of using white concrete for this, because I never actually had concrete here before. Now I made the concrete powder out of components I had, so therefore everything I think worked nice and well. Now let's head into what I plan to do today. One of my goals I have for this year is to complete the first level of the Temple Dungeon by the end of this year. I've made quite a bit of progress since the last episode and I have most of the complex dug out. Though there's still bits here and there that still needs to do some digging. And I have even more parts that are going to be needing to be flushed out and you know all decorated. Now let's have a look here at the Earth Temple. Now this is what the Earth Temple looks like. I've put in a ceiling since the old episode and the grass has grown here and you can see I have moved in the cattle. So yes, I decided that this is going to be my little cattle area for the time being. And that I could think of that if we have to kill some cattle every once in a while in order to get meat or leather. It can be thought of as a sacrifice to the altar there. So therefore, I think the Earth Temple is done. Now, one of the things I'm wondering, though, is getting wool. Because wool is going to be a real major problem if I'm going to decorate the walls and all with banners, which I think would be a good idea. So therefore... I have recently found uh, this little thing, uh, which is, of course, a spider spawner. So the idea there, then, is for me to create a... Uh, okay, I got a bucket there, some CDs. That's what the bucket looks like now. So the idea is for me to create a string farm from this. Because you know that the other spawner I've got is mainly there for activity, practice, killing, and practice killing, combat practice, a demonstration of the fight against Lulz, XP farm, all those things together. So of course they don't do any of those particular efficiently simply because there are so many different functions on what's done in there. I, I just saw the iron there and I just had to go for it. And besides, this is this is what the diorite looks like now. I'm sorry, andesite, andesite, not diorite, andesite. That, that's the andesite. So yes, I could always use a little bit more andesite. I'm about to finish the first level and the first level is the part that's going to be is that needs the most andesite in it. Because when I get down to the second level, I'll be using granite in place where I'm often using andesite here. There you go. There you go. And yes. 
my plan here is to create a simple drop farm, meaning I'm going to widen this all out and then have a big long drop far enough down to kill the spiders. And then after that, I will, of course, put it on a system so I could capture everything in there, pick up the string, probably have to push it back up so I could have a collection box over here after bringing everything down. But the first step to this whole thing is going to be widen out this area. And here we have it, one massive drop, which should be enough to kill any of the spiders that spawn up there. Now I just have to test this, which means heading all the way up and killing lots of spiders. Getting rid of these torches actually is going to be a very important thing to do in order to handle this right. And preferably to do that without getting myself killed. Now I don't have a collection system yet. That's going to be something I'm obviously going to have to do at some point. And I'll need that before this is going to work. Good. Good. And I got some. Uh, let's use some cobble for that. The idea here is to get rid of all the torches. And be careful because spiders will probably start spawning soon as soon when I get rid of all the torches. So that's the thing to be careful of. Let's see, I think that's the last torch on the side. So that means I could start getting rid of all of this. Now, just so you know, this particular farm is inspired by a recent video by Zuma who was now he was building I believe a quadruple I believe it was a quadruple spider farm over at his base on Hermitcraft. So therefore he has a much grander thing where he had several farms all together. This is just a single spider farm. So it's a much more modest scale. Ooh. All right, be careful there. Good thing for for control and all this and the idea here is to see whether or not those spiders all actually let me get rid of that and now I have to get rid of now there's one on the other end also so let me get a little bit more I have enough cobble to get around. I should have thought of that when I was out there already. Just don't want to fall too far down. I might be enough to kill me. Seems like things have already falling down there. But I think that'll increase as soon as I get rid of the last of these. Get rid of that. Good, good, last of those. All right, that should be it. Which means now I should have this big pit of, sp well, uh, that is definitely successful. All right, I'll call that a success. So what I'm gonna do uh, for now, I'm going to patch that up so I won't get the light coming in there. And I do have this alternate passage for going down. Heading down here, let me pick up the stuff I dropped along the way. Some string. 
Not much, but all right, a little bit, some torches. All right, and this should be it. Now, I am going to need a collection system because without that, this entire thing is going to be useless. But I think that is step one of this project. I've made a few preliminary tests here, and it looks like the production rates are about what I'll expect. So what I need now is a collection method. Because when you have a system like this, we've got all these spiders dropping to the floor there. And when they drop to the floor, they get killed. But of course, in about five minutes, everything will despawn. So therefore, there will be a limit of what I can have unless I throw them into a cart somewhere. Now, one possibility is to line all of this with hoppers. Now, I don't think that's a very good idea because that is going to take uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, one hundred and twenty-one hoppers in order to collect all of this. Not a good idea. So therefore, I am going to work with a minecart system, uh, so therefore I'll go under here, put rails, have a hopper minecart go all around here and see if I can collect everything. And this is going to be my first time working with a minecart hopper, so therefore I don't know exactly how well this is going to work. But this is the type of thing that Zoomavoid often does. Now. For his big one, his big drop one, I think he used a system involving water, pushing the spiders into water. So therefore, if I were going to do that, I wouldn't have needed a drop this big. Because then that system would just have maybe softened up, pushed into the cactus to get killed or something. But in this case, I'm killing them directly with the drop. So therefore, what I want to do... is to dig under here, create a rail system right under this killing block and see how that works. Now I have never done this before, but I think I've seen enough videos of various hermits such as Mumbo and Zumavoid in order to get the idea of what I need to do. So I better put on this this side. So let me get to digging here, and hopefully I won't cut down my killing floor. One of the fringe benefits of this particular project is that I'll be digging so far down that I may run into an occasional diamond. Now that I have this little basement done, I need to... add the rail line and to do that I presume I'm going to need to add that back let's get some rails I've managed to make some rails probably many more than I actually needed for this task now how does this actually work I think I think rails have some sort of directionality that they like to have Yeah, okay, so I did start building in the right direction. Good. So what I want to do is I want to build this oh, one row at a time. Now, I'm not going to have a way to get light in here. Hmm, I'll have to think on that, or do the rail lines prevent it? The only thing I could think that could... Oops. I certainly don't want that loop. Uh, I think you need some sort of activator or something like that over there in order for that to work. I'll have to see. I'll, I'll need some activator or power rails or whatever you need in order to get that thing. Now, I do want this bro to continue, though. Let's see. I think you can... Uh, 
Well, <laughs> well, you, you get the idea. I'll just try to get this all around here and eventually get a loop that ends over here. Here's an abbreviated version of the cart system. So let me just put this on here. And of course, I need redstone to power that. Hmm, didn't think about that. Well, I'll just. Oh, no, not. Not a suppose I could create a button and just power it that way. Of course, yeah. Well, that shows you how much I'm going to need. <laughs> well, I picked up that piece of cobble that I had hanging over there, and of course, uh, that powered rail is not powered since I don't have anything in it. So I'm obviously going to get have to get some uh, redstone in order to put under this. I think I got it now. I've got a minecart going back and forth, back and forth between these two locations. Grabbing anything that may be above it, though right now there isn't anything above it because we're not quite high enough, but that gives a nice proof of concept. Now I just need to extend it a bit. Now we have the full system, so let's activate and see if it goes all the way. It looks like I might be just a little bit short on power. Oh, okay, okay. It gets a little boost from the power rails in the middle. Gets all the way down to the end. It turns around. And it comes back. Slows down a little bit in the middle. Catches up speed. And of course returns and starts moving again. So, I'll have to find a way to stop that so that I can have a chance to peek what's inside. Right now it should be empty, but I'm going to have a little AFK session here in a moment and see how much I get. And when I get back from it, I'm hoping it won't be empty anymore. And see what I get out of it. Now, for now, I guess I'll just have to, oops, do that. That should, yeah, cause that to happen. One block of redstone. Well, I suppose that's something I expected to get. So I'll get this back on here, start it up, and be back after a little AFK session. I was away for a little over an hour, and in that time, the cart became half-filled and then came to a stop. And of course, this is because when the cart gets filled up, it slows down and is no longer able to reach the power. So therefore, what I'm going to need to do is to add my dumping mechanism to collect everything, put it into a chest, and at the end of that, then we could do a good test to see what happens to the cart when it goes all the way across and gets periodically emptied. I've done a little tweaking. Now I've got a hopper and a chest. So all I need to do is to activate this thing and see if it can get all the way around and back because that's what's going to be important is that we can hit it all the way through there, get all the way back, and hopefully you could do that while it has as much of a load as we can reasonably get. Now this is only oh, once around. We've got to have at least two full circuits before I'm going to be satisfied that we've got everything in here. This is a bit of a trial and error thing because this is my first time really working with minecarts. Now there should be nothing in there at the moment. So it looks like that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head upstairs, do a bit of an AFK session, 
and see what I pick up in that time period. I think a half an hour should do for this. It has now been 35 minutes. Therefore, let us go and check what we collected in that time. First, I want to find out what we have in the number of skeletons because that's the next thing we're going to need to solve is that little problem. What to do about our friends here? Oh, one actually survived the fall. That's interesting. Well, well, well. All right. One spider survived the fall. And I picked up some bones and, of course, some string from the. So I picked up six string from there. And what do I have in the chest? Three and a half stacks. In 35 minutes. I would be expecting a stack every 10 minutes, so that is right on with my expectations. So therefore, this is working as expected with the rates I'm expecting. So I just need to solve the problem with the skeletons. Most likely, I'm going to replace all of this stone here with magna blocks that way any survivors then will die from that I'm hoping since it's mainly going to be skeletons that will be that will be surviving the fall they're not going to have a way out on that so I better put it on a door here so the skeleton won't escape or anything like that and once I do that I'll have a way out on it I may have the occasional sur surviving spider that will climb walls or whatever but I don't think that's going to affect things too much but that's it that I have for today. When I return next time, we are going to finish up the first level of the dungeon. Have all the finishing touches done, I'm hoping. And we'll see if we succeed that in the next episode of Pony Plays a Minecraft Wellstopia.